Andrea, how are you doing today? This spot is so cool. I feel like I'm doing like the first comedy show in like post-World War II Britain. Like there should be a big sign over there that says like, keep calm and please don't bomb. Like, Have a good set, man. We've been through a lot here. That's good to be here. I just got a haircut, guys. Yeah, you guys were like, well, I saw you before and it was time. Yeah, good work, Barber. I think they went a little too overboard with the high top fade. Like, I can't pull this off, right? Like, I feel like the only way they can describe this look is like Fresh Prince of Tel Aviv. <laughs> can you imagine if Will Smith's tagline was like, Yellow Boa, he, that would really <laughs> occupy your attention. You know? I don't like going to the barber, they ask too many questions, right? It's like, you're the professional, I'm the one who needs your help, right? Like, if I could get whatever sort of haircut I wanted without any checks and balances, I would always just get a bowl cut. <laughs> just so I could understand what it felt like to be uncircumcised. <laughs> no, it's fun to be here. It's a little cold. Thanks for coming out. It's a tough time of year for, uh, for people with uh, seasonal depression. It's an especially tough time of year for people with depression in every season. <laughs> like I'm like the Bo Jackson of depression. Like baseball season, sad. Football season, sad. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people are like, Noah, you know Bo Jackson actually went to the playoffs with the Oakland Raiders. I'm like, well, depression is a lot like the Oakland Raiders, right? Like, you're going to have some highs and a lot of lows, but there are, like, some larger systemic issues that need to be addressed with, like, talk therapy and years of medication. Like, moving the team to Las Vegas is not going to fix your serotonin levels, you know? Hey, you guys are fun. I'm sorry if I seem a little wired up here, a little bit jittery. I had a lot of coffee before my set. You guys still doing uh, milk in your coffee or you've moved on to non-dairy alternatives? What about you? What are you taking your coffee, man? Cream. Cream, nice. Yeah, old school. Hell yeah. What about you guys? What are you taking your coffee? Cream. Cream, yeah. Just coordinate your answers before the show. <laughs> I, uh, I had a splash of almond milk in my coffee before the set. Uh, I think it's great that we're moving away from milk, but at the same time, we just don't find missing kids anymore. <laughs> And these non-dairy milk alternatives are so conceited too, right? Like you get a carton of oat milk, they're paragraphs and paragraphs about how great it is for your body and for the environment. You get a carton of oat milk, it just says, hey, fuck you, we're milk. <laughs> By the way, you seen any of these kids? <laughs> I, uh, I moved recently. That's uh, an exciting thing going on with me. I used to have four roommates, now I live by myself. When I moved, a lot of people said, no, do you feel comfortable living by yourself? Just you surrounded by your dark thoughts all the time. And I was like, well, do my dark thoughts leave their dishes in the sink? <laughs> when I was moving, there were two types of places I could afford. There were like these really teeny studios and these places called English basements. When I saw those two options, my first thought was, oh no, they're colonizing basements now. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> And something you gotta know about uh, English basements if you live in one, you have like pretty rigid tenant rights. Like if your landlord ever like jacks up your rent or turns off your utilities, you have like a moral and a legal obligation to like throw all your tea bags into the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I chose the studio. English basements, there are a lot of problems. The, the British, one of them, and the other one, they flood a lot, especially in DC. The first place I lived in, the basement flooded so much it was like rising up to knee level. We got really concerned and we called the fire department. Yeah, they seem like they're really out of their element. They showed up. Uh, I guess we can put more water on your water. If you just start a fire next time, you make it a lot easier on us. And I'm liking my studio so far. I've actually been passing uh, notes under the door with the, uh, the downstairs neighbor. It's been really cool so far. Um, when I moved in, she put a note under my door. She said, uh, welcome to the building. I am your new downstairs neighbor. If you need anything, let me know. So I put a note under her door and I said, thank you for your kind note. I'm your new upstairs neighbor. If you need anything, let me know. And she put a note under my door and she said, thank you for your response to my kind note. <laughs> I'm your new downstairs neighbor. If you need anything, let me know. And then I put a note under her door. I said, thank you for your response to my response to your kind note. I'm your upstairs neighbor. Let me know if you need anything. And then she put a note under my door. <laughs> Are you guys tired of this yet? I was tired of it, I moved out. And into her apartment, we're engaged now. Uh, yeah. We just sent out our wedding invitations, they say, welcome to our wedding, we're the married couple, if you need anything. 
Oh, you guys are a lot of fun. I'll do some wholesome material. I've uh, been reading a lot of the Bible lately, and I'm here to tell you about it. Uh, <laughs> there's one story I really don't like, and that's the Cain and Abel story. Uh, and it's not because he killed his brother, because, say, hey, shit happens, right? Who among us? <laughs> it's that he thought he could get away with it, right? Like, at this point in human history, there are eight other people on Earth. Like, who else could have done it, right? Like, Cain really thought he could sneak a fast one on God, right? God's like, Cain, you see your brother? And he's like, who am I? My brother's keeper? And God's like, well, talk to the other six people. They haven't seen him either. Cain's like, I don't know, it's a pretty dark time, pretty scary time to be alive. I was watching the news the other day, and it looks like the Jericho Strangler's back on the loose. And God's like, I haven't even invented the news yet. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I think biblical news would be a lot of fun, especially the weather reports. <laughs> It'd be like, due to increased pestilence and greed, forecast this weekend call for floods. Bring an umbrella. <laughs> now we're to Gary with sports. Gary, oh, I don't know. God seems to hate the New York Jets. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been fun. I'm going to do a character and get out of here, okay? This is a new character I've been working on. It's called uh, Self Conscious DJ, okay? Self Conscious DJ. Ready? If you're having a good time, put your hands in the air. If you're not having a good time, was it something that I said? <laughs> this is another character I'm working on. It's a self-conscious comedian. You guys like that last joke? You promise? I'm not just telling you that. Okay. Hey, you guys have been a blast. Have a good day. Have a good day.